Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to process a sunset photo in Lightroom. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to do. We're going to start with an image that looks something like this, and we're going to create a result that looks a lot more like this. And we're going to do that just using the options in the Develop module here in Lightroom. To get started with this image, let's just have a look and see what we have here. One thing I'm really concerned about is this blown out area of sky, and I don't think that there's really much that I can do with it because you can see that it is actually a blown out area. And even though I was shooting in RAW, I haven't been able to capture the sun here in any way that we can retrieve it. So it's going to need to go. So I'm going to crop the image. It's unfortunate, but it's going to give me a better result. While I'm here, I'm also just going to balance out this image. I think it's going to look pretty good at this sort of a crop. I'm also going to make sure that I've got it straight, and I'm going to straighten to the clock tower and click Done. So this is the image that we're actually going to work with. And so I'm going to start out by adding to the exposure. So I want to expose it a little better than it is right now. And I'm going to up the contrast. I want to bring in some of the color into the sky. So while the temperature was as shot, it's obviously way too blue. So I'm going to start with shade, and that's going to give the sky a really nice sort of creamy pink look, which we're going to build on. I'm going to balance my whites at this point. So I'm going to hold the white slider and holding the Alt or Option key. I'm going to see if I can just get rid of that color in the corner. Well, I can't, and I'm probably going to crop it again just to get that a little bit closer because there really is nothing I can do about that very white area, and I'm going to be compromising too much on the rest of the image by trying to remove that from the image. So let's try again with the Alt or Option key. Well, that's much better on the whites now. This is where the whites is coming in over this side, but you can see that I can still get my whites up quite a bit without beginning to blow out that area of the sky. Let's go and see if we can peg some black. So I just want to hold or the Alt or Option key until I get some blacks in the image. And there they are. And now we can work on perhaps opening up the shadows, which is going to give us some detail in the buildings here. And also highlights, just take the highlights down to darken up the sky because we want to create a sort of nighttime look here. So we do want to get a little bit more darker detail into the sky. I'm now going to have a look at my clarity and vibrance. I'm going to increase clarity because that's going to give me a bit of sharper detail through the image and also increase vibrance because that again is going to help me boost the color as to will saturation. Now the saturation is going really, really yellow here. I think I'm going to back that off a little bit because I don't want it to be quite so yellow. I'm going to now add a couple of graduated filters because they will allow us to start working on the sky. So I'm going to bring in a graduated filter from the top here, running pretty much parallel across the image. And I'm going to darken this a little bit. So I'm going to just decrease the exposure so we can start getting a little bit of interesting darkness in the sky. And the other things that I want here is I want a bit more extra clarity and perhaps some extra contrast. I'll also want to try and start killing this yellow color, which is really a little bit disturbing. So let's go and start bringing in a little bit of a tint here because the tint is a sort of purpley magenta color. So that will help us a little bit here. It really is just a case of determining the sort of color that I want in the sky here and then just bringing it out of the image. If I want a little bit extra detail, I could also increase sharpness, but for now I'm not going to do that. I'm also going to see where highlights takes me. Just want to be really aware that I don't want to get a lot of fringing around the clock tower here, which I might do if I try to bring my highlights up or down too much. So I'm just going to click Done. And I'm going to bring a graduated filter up from the bottom of the image too. 
just want to darken that a little bit and again just decreasing the exposure a bit and here I do want those same colors so I want that sort of magenta yellow orange sort of look in the Thames here so just going to bring that in by just adjusting the temperature I can also bring some in using color so if I wanted to I could go and get a color that would work with the image I'm going to be working in this sort of area but I could bring in a color this way either way will it help me achieve that look so I'm going to click done now I'm going to look across the skyline here and I want to bring in a little bit of the sort of detail that I've brought in in the top of the sky but around here the graduated filter is just not going to help me there are way too many spires here so I'm going to opt for the adjustment brush I'm going to turn on auto mask because that means that Lightroom is going to mask it for me I want quite a large size and just a little bit of a feather not much at all I'm going to click here to pin this down and let's just show the selected mask overlay so we can see where we're working and you'll see that provided I keep the little X mark in the middle of this brush over something that I actually do want to select it's going to make a really good job of masking this sky for me to the extent where I won't have to do much if any of the work at all this is a really really helpful tool but you will probably find that you'll need to show your selected mask overlay as you're using it just to make sure that you're having the expected results and that you don't go for example over a building here and cause the selection to be made in an area that you didn't want it to be selected it's all about where that little cross hatch that little X goes So I'm just working around here you'll see if there's a lot of detail in the sky such as this sort of jet trail I'll need to pick that up because just clicking with the X in the middle of it isn't actually going to select it because it's not going to select the sky around it so you, there are places where you will need to be a little bit careful and you can probably do that later on by turning off auto mask and now I can go and pick up that area that is covered by the jet trail and any other areas that I didn't get in the sky but of course the skyline is already taken care of because I've been able to use the auto mask feature when I'm done I'm going to deselect show selected mask overlay and now I can make sure that I'm bringing in the colors that I want and the detail that I want in to the sky here again clarity I want to bring down the exposure a little bit to try and get a more interesting sky I've got a few problems up here but I think that I can solve them in a minute by just taking that area out of the selection maybe knock down quite so much with my exposure and click done if I really do want to deepen the top of the sky then I can do so with yet another graduated filter just bring a nice gentle transition graduated filter in and just decrease the exposure up the top here I'm going to get into here and just see if I can eliminate some of the problems here I'm going to actually zoom out before I do that I want to bring up this pin so that I have selected this area and then zoom into the tower here and I'm going to erase around here and to do so I want a really low flow and a brush with a fairly large feather just really concerned to make sure that this flow is very very light and this is the area that I just want to remove I'll make sure that I'm doing that really carefully so I'm not getting some extra light where I don't want it now you can be a little bit more careful with what you're doing but you'll be able to buy back some of the darkness around the edge of that tower by just erasing over it with a brush that has a very very low flow setting 
Now let's concentrate on the buildings here. Again, the adjustment brush. I want to zero out everything, so I'm just going to click Reset. And I want a little bit of extra exposure here. Let's have a look at what we've got. A low flow, a reasonable size feather, and probably a bit less density. So that when I brush this on, it's not going to be really, really in your face, but it's going to be a bit more gentle. Now I'm going to select Auto Mask because that will allow me to work here on the clock tower and the buildings here. And again, because these buildings really are beautiful, I'm going to give them a much warmer glow. They could really take quite a bit of magenta here. We could even up the exposure. Once the buildings are actually selected, we can change the exposure very easily by just dragging on this exposure slider. So we get a bit of movement within the image. Now I want to zoom in down here. I'm just zooming in and then holding the space bar as I move around because this is an area where we're seeing through the bridge to the buildings behind. And there's a couple of little areas here that I want to take care of just lightening up in those areas as well so that we get some depth in here. I'm going to click Done and now let's have a look at the bridge because the bridge itself has got some green color in it. So I'm going to get down to a quite small brush and I'm just going to gently follow the lines of this bridge where it has this sort of greeny blue through it. Now increasing saturation will help a little bit here, but so too will actually increasing green. So I can come in here with the tint slider and just tint that by dragging towards the green end of the slider and that will give me that extra bit of green color throughout the bridge. So I'll click Done. I'm a little concerned about this because my eye is continually going to this. So I'm just going to select in here and I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to click on it and with Auto Mask turned on and high density, high flow, low feather, reasonable size, I'm just going to click and select this. Now you can see that I've got exposure set high because it's actually getting lighter, but that doesn't matter. I just need to, first of all, make sure I get a good selection around here. I'm trying to get the eraser here, but the eraser's on low flow. That's why it's not working. Let's turn up the flow on the eraser, make sure that we've got this pylon top selected. Turn off the selected mask overlay. And now I'm just going to decrease the exposure on this and that will darken it. And darkening it will make it less obvious to our eyes. So let's just click Done and let's zoom out and you can see that it's becoming less obvious. I probably want to do this a couple of times. Let's just zoom in here a second time. Not being able to zoom in quite as close as I would like to. So I'm going to open up this panel and set my zoom to 3 to 1. It's much better lets me zoom in and see things even more clearly. Well again I'm going to start my selection here and just drag up here because this is the edge that I want to get. Again it's still really really bright. I'm going to bring my exposure on this area down. Now you can see that I haven't made a very good selection here, but that's fine because I can just go straight into my eraser and then just erase off that. I'm going to feather this. So I get a softer edge. If I go too far, just come back, reduce the size of the brush, increase the feather, perhaps even reduce the flow and density, allowing me just to pick up this edge, make it a bit softer. But still making sure that I'm getting a result in darkening it. So 
it's a little less apparent than it was before. Let's go to the lights now because with these lights we can actually bump them up so we can make them look more like lights thanks to the radial filter now in Lightroom 5. So I'm just going to drag over the first of these lights with my radial filter. Now at the moment it's adjusting everything other than this light so I'm just going to invert it and then increase the exposure a bit on it. Perhaps even increase the size of it and its feather. When I'm relatively happy with it, I can Control and Alt and drag it away and that just creates a duplicate of it. So I'm just going to zoom back out and see how it looks because I don't want too much but I want it to be realistic. Well that's looking pretty good so let's go in here and do the same thing. Again the radial filter, drag over it to create that glow, make sure I have it inverted so that we're affecting the inside of the filter not the outside. Increase the exposure a bit and a little bit of a feather and again control alt command option on the Mac to create lights for each one of these light globes here. Now because I've got another set of light globes to do I'm actually going to save this so I'm going to click here and save the current settings as a new preset because that's going to save me from having to do it again. So I'm just going to call it lights and click create and then done. Let's zoom back out, that's pretty good. Let's go into the last set of lights or a set of lights that I'm seeing here. Let's click on the radial filter here. You can see lights is the setting here so I can just drag over this but again we just will need to invert it. Control Alt to drag a copy, that's Command Option on the Mac. Let's zoom back out again. Now there are possibly additional lights through here. Well here's another set here and we could just continue to go ahead and light this bridge. There's going to be another one in here too and another one over here. So I'm going to do those and come back when I've finished. Now I've gone ahead and lit all the lights here on the bridge but one of the other things that I'm going to work on is the actual clock because I've actually shot the clock before on a number of occasions and what I've noticed is that it actually has a tendency to blow out when you do a long exposure and that's because it's particularly bright. So let's actually brighten it up by again using this radial filter. I'm going to invert the mask on this and I'm going to just brighten up this area and perhaps even increase the clarity here. And now I can drag it, I'm just going to turn it on first so we can see it and I'm going to drag it to make the adjustment for this other clock face here. So again Control Alt or Command Option on the Mac. Again just to light this area. Oh, I've not made a copy as I've done that so let's just go and do that again. That's better. As I worked in close to the buildings here you can see that there's a lot of noise in this image so we're going to go and deal with the noise now. Going down to the noise reduction area and I'm going to increase the luminance noise because a lot of this is luminance noise but a lot too it's probably colour noise too. So I'm going to increase both these noise reductions a bit just to deal with that. I'm also going to sharpen the image so let's just move out of here with a zoom and to adjust the sharpening I'm going to adjust the sharpening amount up and then I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I check on the radius. Well this doesn't need a very big radius at all so I'm going to set that to a fairly small value of 0 0.7 
and for detail again I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag on the detail slider to work out just where I want that set. Now typically when you use a small radius you want to use a slightly larger detail value so I've set that at 25. And now for the masking again I'm going to hold the Alt key or Option key as I drag on this to determine exactly what I want to sharpen. And this white area is showing me the area of the image that is going to be sharpened. So I'm thinking sharpening for this set at about 63 for the mask is pretty good. I'll let go of everything. So there's the image so far. What I'd like to do now is to bring in a little bit more detail in this boat here. So I'm just going to decrease my zoom a little bit. 2 to 1 is probably large enough so that I can see most of the boat. I'm going to click on the adjustment brush because that's going to allow me to get into the boat here. Click to target it or to set down the brush so that I've got a pin here and I'm going to just start dragging over or painting over the shape now. I need to increase my flow and density here perhaps my brush size. I just want to say this. I've got it set way too high but that's because I want to see what I'm painting on because I can easily adjust it in a minute but it's a little difficult to see otherwise exactly what's happening here with this brush. So I'm going for these white or lighter areas on the boat. So I just want to bring some attention to this And again this is way too much, the effect is far too intense but this is just showing me the area that I have selected. Now let's zoom out. Now I can drag down on the exposure just to bring it back to a realistic level. I'm going to add a little bit of pink into the boat as well as sort of magenta pink into here and click done when I'm done. Now I want to continue to work on the buildings here and I'm going to do this with the adjustment brush. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush and make sure that I have a reasonable size brush, a reasonable size feather. I don't want a very big flow and I don't want a very big density and right now no auto mask. So I'm just going to select over the areas that I want to affect by pinning down the brush and then just brushing over a few of these buildings. I don't want the exposure up so high but I do want to build in some contrast and some clarity into these areas. So I'm going to increase both contrast and clarity and perhaps just increase shadows a little bit even and then again bump up the colour in these buildings with this magenta slider and click done when I'm done. Now if I want to light the building itself that's possible too. I can just zoom into areas of the building so that I can see the windows in here and then grab the adjustment brush and the only thing I want at this stage really is a little bit of extra exposure. I want a very small brush and I don't want very much of a feather at all. And I don't want a lot of flow or density either because I want to be able to pin this brush down and just lighten these areas to give the sense that there is actually a light behind here. Now if not getting enough of an effect particularly since I have a 0.76 exposure adjustment here. I can just increase the flow and density to get what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is to go around here and just light some of the windows in this building. If I go too far I'm just going to Alt drag on the area that I had painted on just to remove the effect. And I can zoom in and out as I work to see the result. Now this is one of the areas that I've lightened and you can see it's really not light enough so I'm going to go back in and lighten it a bit more and come back once I've lit some of these windows. 
So I've now finished lighting up the building and this is the lighting that I've added. I've added lights to some of the windows and you can see here that I've also just clicked to add a little bit of light to the bridge below the areas where these lamps are to give it the suggestion that the lamps are actually throwing some light on this surrounding area. Now I softened my brush quite a bit. I found that I was working with too hard a brush so I've softened the edges and I added a little bit of negative clarity again to soften the effect. Now the exposure obviously is way too high. I'm just going to take this down and I had the exposure set at about 0.4, I think it was about 0.38, something like that was an ideal exposure I thought for this lighting of the windows. Now if I wanted to I would continue to work through some of these windows and add some additional lights to them and perhaps some additional lights up the street. But basically this is the fix that we came here to create. This is the image as it was before we started. We cropped it and then we've worked on it to give it a more appealing look. We've really brought back the detail in the sky which was really beautiful detail that night. Lit the bridge and just added some atmosphere to the image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.